Hello everyone, my name is Amazing Beaver. Welcome to a potentially new series that will not be done as often. I wanted to do this as FNAF 1 to 4 is released for the Xbox One, PlayStation, and Switch. I won't be doing another playthrough for these games as I've already doing them on the channel, but I have completed them all for this review. I'm not entirely sure what to name this, but I'm thinking on either Amazing Beaver Reviews or just Beaver Reviews. I'm sorry about the uh, live stream that I did on the FNAF, uh, the Freddy in Space, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really think that one through. I might do another stream where I just like, you know, it's better, because I've got the controls sorted out on that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this is another sort of video in which I talk about things. Last time I did this was on the video for the upcoming FNAF fan game called Pyro Illusion. I do suggest that you go check it out. Note that I won't be able to review every game that comes out as I'm not a review channel, and this will be more centered to new re releases that I can play in my spare time. I still hope to do these when possible. When I seen that FNAF was going to come out to consoles, I slammed my £20 note on the table in excitement. We'll be doing this review of five sections, four of each being the games separately reviewed, and for the fifth section will be the final verdict or my opinion as a whole about these games. Let's begin with the game that started it all. Straight up when I booted the game, I noticed that the game is a brand new menu soundtrack which is pretty amazing and a cheats menu which you can use to progress any night, but you will not get any achievements whilst they're active. These cheats are Unlimited Power, Fast Nights, and Radar Map. These must have been borrowed from FNAF 3 and 4 as they were the only games that use this feature. There is another new feature to this, and that being the ability to pause the game and contemplate life choices. <laughs> And for some odd reason, the click team thinks that you know the controls, so there is no button mapping picture in the menu and the player is left to guess by themselves. Luckily for you though, I know the controls. Here's my own version of the mapping that I created terribly, but it still represents them. <laughs> and yes, you can still boot Freddy's nose, you just have to press X on the Xbox, Square on PlayStation, and Y on the Switch, I believe. As you open up the camera, you'll see some noticeable chop in the animation. As you change camera, there's also a tiny delay when you do that. But when in the office and you turn, it is very smooth. But in terms of AI and other things, the game is the exact same pretty much. Now for the part many may or may not have been wondering about. Honestly, I have no clue what happened here. It's a bit disappointing to be honest, I expected for these jump scares to be the same as the original PC Steam version, or smooth at least, but no, there must have been a problem in optimizing the game for consoles, even though you could play this game with a freaking toaster, and Click Team just eventually gave up trying. This takes away the scare factor from the game and just purely ruins the first time surprise effect of being scared to death. Although the game manages to have the same detail as the PC and newer features, the game was brought down heavily due to performance issues regarding jump scares and cameras, a crucial part in the majority of FNAF games. Also the fact that we aren't even given a clue as to what the controls are makes the game feel a bit rushed and I wouldn't recommend buying it until there is a patch, if Click Team are even working on one that is. Alright, let's move to the next game in the series. Now into FNAF 2, which has a new menu soundtrack as well, with a cheats menu like the first game did, including all the same cheats, but this time with the added ability of being able to change the game's aspect ratio, which is useful for those with a bigger or smaller screen. One thing I forgot to mention was that these games load in pretty quickly, so that is not an issue. 
When the first night is started, you will see a prompt at the bottom left of the screen telling you that you can hold A, or the button that it tells you to flash your light. Also, the phone guy's lines are messed up on the Switch version. Here's a clip from Mairusu who was playing it on the Switch. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Impressions here on the consoles. Press A to use flashlight. Okay, we didn't even get an instruction on FNAF 1, I don't think. Okay, so we got to be right in the middle. Why does Scotty sound funny? Is that just me? This makes the phone guy sound like he returned from dying after the first game. The office has a new poster on the side in which Toy Bonnie is also holding a new guitar it seems. But then, after that, the game just leaves the player clueless as to how they control the game again. Here is a control scheme I terribly made since Click Team didn't make one again. The camera issue happens here too, but if you flip it enough you can fix the lag and switching the other cameras has no lag at all. When you do this to control the vibrates, you'll also have to do the same with the mask. I found a little bug in the game that was mentioned by someone else in an Xbox store review, so I don't take credit for it. If you press left bumper and uh, right bumper on all the mask and cam button equivalent on for other consoles at the same time, you will activate both of the animations at the same time and end up in the mask. But taking the mask off will do this but in the reverse animation, if that makes sense. As another positive at least, there is a new Night 5 ending screen with the characters in the background in more vibrant colours than the original. And this game also includes the feature to pull us the game, and the death mini games are there too, so there's no need to worry about that. Unfortunately, the jump scares are severely affected as well, making them choppy and downright unscary for the game's experience. Even if the game is more chaotic than the first, once again, Click Team needs to fix this. With newer features and designs in the game which are good, and better performance in some areas that the first lacked in, and the new menu theme, the game still suffers from choppy jump scares, but not so bad design. After that, we move to the third game in the franchise. Once again, you agree with the new menu theme which sounds absolutely amazing and are able to change the aspect ratio again for the size of someone's screen if needed. This time you ain't able to access the cheats until you complete Nightmare Mode just like in the PC version. This time around, the game actually prompts you with the controls even if they're not within the control map, which would not be needed here it seems. The camera system works just alright and only lags at the slightest bit in the animation, but scrolling through the cams is lag free which is a relief. Although FNAF 3 didn't present the most exciting gameplay for most, the game somewhat saves itself with mini games that have been more prominent in this game. Using the interact button, you can boot Freddy's nose and also interact with the posters and other items that need to be interacted with by using a combination of buttons. Like for example here, I had to use right trigger and X together to interact with the puppet poster on the wall. Or for the buttons on the arcade machine, I had to use the D-pad and X to press them. There's also a new theme for the good ending, which I'll have you listen to.
This game once again suffers from choppy jump scares, although they're a little less laggy, probably because they may require less frames or something like that. But really, Click Team needs to fix these as it's urgent. <laughs> Overall, this game features some new bits here and there, but mostly the same without a pause button and performance issues that were in the other games before it. And once again, I do not recommend that you buy this game. Now, let's move to the fourth and final game of this review. As we arrive into the main menu, we once again have a new theme to listen to, the ability to change the aspect ratio, and that's it. There isn't much change in this game, which I'd prefer. The loading screen is a bit longer, with the clock symbol turning at the loading bar beneath it. Also, you can cancel the night from loading, as seen here. Although all three of the other games were brought down upon negatively, this game, to my surprise, runs so much better. The game even tells you the controls on the first night, just like the PC version so you aren't left in the darker controls. The minigames that happen after each night are just as detailed as the PC version, although in the Switch version the crying child's legs do not move, probably because of a technical limitation on the console. Apart from the Switch, the other consoles have the PC detail if that really bothers you. The game runs very smoothly and I don't have to wait on loading when I move to another spot. Finally, out of all the games, this game is the smoothest in its jump scares and it actually feels like the horror game it's supposed to be, which just adds to the greatness of this game. And most of the other games did not have this good jump scares because for some reason or whatever, there's limitations or whatever that they can't optimize something. I don't know, they just don't know how to handle their engine well, I guess. FNAF 4 on consoles is definitely the best out of them all on console editions, with the correctly working jump scares that I can actually get scared of, and overall is a really good game. Do not be stupid like I was and waste half the amount of a AAA game on unfinished games that were supposed to work correctly. It's like they just took my money and flushed it down the toilet. If you wanted to waste that kind of money, well, you might as well go and buy Fallout 76. If you own all the games on Steam like me, or have a PC at least, I recommend you go buy those instead. They're also a lot more cheaper, but if you were to buy at least one game out of the four, I recommend you go pick up FNAF 4, this is the most stable out of all of these games, and actually good. <laughs> it really hurts to have to say these sort of things about my favourite games though, because, you know, th I really love playing them on the PC and all, but then just to see it so terribly on the console, I don't know really what happened. But anyway, I do hope that you do not make the same mistake as I did and do right with your money. <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed this review on the console ports of the original FNAF saga. Click Team will probably be porting the other games on the consoles as well, which I might review but I don't know. But I just hope they release those in a more stable condition so that someone like me, a person who's been with the game for ages, can still enjoy it.